Slip space is complicated, and it comes in more forms than you may think. Used extensively throughout the Halo universe, slip space may have you wondering how exactly did Chief manage to get into the library on Installation 04? Or why did New Mombasa completely implode when Regret fled to Installation 05? Today, these questions will be answered by summarizing the basics of what we currently know about slipstream space traversal. And so, my name is Same Token, and you're watching How Slip Space Works. In the year 2291, 261 years before the events of Halo Combat Evolved, Human physicists Tobias Shaw and Wallace Fujikawa discovered a way to tap into something they were calling slipstream space using a device known as the Shaw Fujikawa Translite Engine. As we know it colloquially, slip space allows objects to travel between points in space far faster than the speed of light. Now, this isn't as simple as just moving ships faster, and there's a very good reason for this. As you approach the speed of light, you begin to experience something physicists call time dilation, where you begin to experience time more slowly. So, if you were traveling at 90% of the speed of light, time for you would advance 10 minutes, while on Earth, 20 minutes would pass. This only gets worse the closer you reach to the speed of light. And with our current understanding of physics, moving any mass faster than light is impossible. Without this ability, it would take hundreds to hundreds of thousands of years to travel between star systems. However, what if instead of moving the spacecraft itself, you were able to bend space? So, you've probably seen this before, but imagine space as a two-dimensional sheet of paper. You are currently here, and you want to reach this point over there. Traveling just under the speed of light, it would take about a hundred years to reach your destination. And thanks to time dilation, where the time passing on Earth is double the time you spent traveling, for your relatives back home, thousands of years could have passed by the time you reach your destination. And you would have to have been frozen in cryosleep for the entire duration. So this is a fair bit impractical if you're wanting to build a thriving spacefaring empire. Now, wormhole theory suggests that instead of having to move your spacecraft, we just need to move space. So why don't we just fold the paper in half and punch a hole right through your destination? Where before they were hundreds of light years apart, the two points are now immediately connected to each other. This means that traveling between them can happen almost instantaneously. Now, while wormholes remain just a theory, the slipstream space Shaw and Fujikawa found uses very similar principles. However, the difference with slip space is rather than it being two points in space connected together, there are many points in space connected by different lengths of tendrils. So again, using the sheet of paper as an analogy, if normal space that we experience every day is this two-dimensional plane, slipstream space is that plane scrunched up into a ball. You can now see that different parts of the paper are now connected, but you'll also notice that each part is of different lengths, and as a result, it runs at different speeds. Imagine slip streams like rivers. Each stream flows at a different speed, and of course, of differing lengths. This means that the duration of travel when a spacecraft enters slip space will depend on the specific slip stream it's using, and also where. As ships must find the interstellar jump points unique to each star system so it can actually enter slip space in the first place. But the main benefit is that you can now connect two points together in mere weeks and months rather than hundreds of years. The single biggest hurdle Shaw and Fujikawa had to overcome with their Translite engine was to not only tear a hole in space-time to enter a slipstream, but to reduce a spacecraft's mass 
to zero, so this could even be possible. You see, slip space is non-spatial, and so matter cannot be allowed to exist in the slip space dimensions. So to do this without squishing a ship's entire crew into infinity, a slip space drive creates a protective bubble within which normal space can continue to exist. This simply means that the occupants of the ship continue to experience normal physics while the bubble safely transports them through the non-spatial slipstreams. And this is where physics start to get a little weird outside the ship, and notions of mass and acceleration no longer exist. Because of this, while in slip space transit, ships can group together in fleets while happily passing through planets and stars without consequence. However, the bubble does also mandate that ships enter slip space from a safe distance, known as safe slip space entry point, to ensure that no objects from around the ship are dragged into slip space with them, as that would have disastrous consequences. For example, slip space jumping within an atmosphere would create a void with no air or matter, as the air and matter would have been dragged into slip space. This void would then be quickly filled by all the surrounding matter left behind, causing a massive implosion. Adding to this danger, improperly mounted slip space drives can result in catastrophic accidents, something that was weaponized during the fall of Reach. Because the speeds of slipstreams vary, there can be unusual discrepancies in travel duration. Traveling to a point further than Earth can sometimes take less time than a point that is closer, depending on the mechanics of the specific slipstreams. However, much of the travel time difference is down to humanity's understanding of slipspace. Traveling through slipstreams requires the ship to move between the 11 slipspace dimensions in order to optimize its travel time, and this is a limiting factor in the speed of traversal. But despite this, slipspace was completely revolutionary for humanity, forever changing the way humans lived and thrived. Habitable worlds previously impossible to reach were now mere days and weeks away. Interstellar communications could now occur near instantaneously, allowing families separated by light years to communicate as if they were on the same planet. Slip space changed everything. However, unlike humanity, the slip space technology of the Covenant is vastly superior and more sophisticated. Rather than tearing a hole into slip space like us humans, the Covenant slice a very fine hole to enter and exit slip space with precision, much less like a saw and much more like a scalpel. This is one of the reasons why Covenant ships can hide from and slip past the UNSC's defenses unnoticed. But having said that, the Forerunner's understanding of slip space trumps all. Being a far more advanced race at the time, the Forerunner's slip space technology would allow them to make incredibly precise slip space jumps from extreme distances, meaning they could cross the entirety of the galaxy with ease. They could also make very small jumps, allowing items and people to be safely transported across short distances, effectively acting as teleportation. Though the Covenant did also utilize this in their spires, which could teleport invading forces close to a planet's surface. The Forerunners had progressed to the point where the bottleneck of slip space wasn't in their technology, but instead in the limitations of something known as reconciliation. Due to a quirk of the laws of slip space, making very large jumps across space can still cause the same time dilation effects that we see when we approach the speed of light. Usually, slip space naturally eliminates this time dilation with a process called reconciliation, where after exiting slip space, time slowly reverts back to normal on its own. This effect can be observed with its telltale blue glow that is more noticeable on Forerunner ships. However, with long slip space jumps, reconciliation does not take effect, creating a host of unwanted paradoxes, potentially shutting off a slipstream. So the Forerunners found a workaround. Reconciliation effectively has a budget. When a slip space jump is long, it exerts a huge amount of strain on space-time, and a so-called reconciliation debt 
starts to build up. The larger the debt, the more severe the paradox is. Now, a debt can be paid by simply waiting and allowing the reconciliation effect to occur. As such, to travel large distances, the forerunners would make a series of smaller jumps to allow for reconciliation between each jump, which reduced the chance of paradoxes. And so, slipspace, while essential for the existence of interplanetary empires, is incredibly complex. Working like crumpled wormholes, slipstreams allow objects to jump between points far faster than light, though not without the dangers of paradoxes and implosions. So today we merely skimmed the surface of slipspace, but I hope this simplified what is an awesomely complicated and to an extent realistic concept. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more content like this. I'll catch you next time.